Hello everybody, it's Nick here with Nick Tolman Music and we are going to go ahead and continue our beginner guitar lesson series using Mel Bay's Modern Guitar Method Grade 1. Today's lesson we'll be looking at page 38 and page 38 is, uh, it doesn't have any major concepts that it's teaching, it's just music to play and that is going to be more and more common in the book. We've learned a lot of what we're going to actually learn in this book. Now it's just a matter of learning new songs, learning as much music as we can with the concepts that we know. So let's dive right in. The first exercise on here is called the Old Mill and it is a duet so let's go ahead and start. So it's marked to play at moderato. We're going to go ahead and just start kind of at the bottom end of that. And we'll start at 100. That's kind of in the gray zone. It could be on Dante Moderato. There's really no hard and fast, like exact metronome markings for on Dante Moderato Allegro. It's all kind of relative. Uh, but we'll start at 100 and then we'll do it there and then do it a little faster. So here is the Old Mill Part 1 at 100 on the metronome. Here we go. Well, one and two and ready and. There we go, that's a fun one to play. It's marked to do all down strokes. Obviously, if you were gonna play this faster, you might need to move into down ups. Um, but yeah, and then there's a DC Alfine, which we've seen a few times in the book so far. So when you get to the end, you're gonna repeat back to the beginning to da capo, and then play to the fine to end. The only thing that I might mention in here that I'm doing that is not explicitly outlined in the book is I'm playing that top line in second position. It just makes sense, right? Because you have to keep going back to that A, and your lowest note is F sharp. Just do it in second position. So play that G with your second finger, F sharp with first finger, then A with fourth. And then right there, you're gonna shift back down to first position. of it's in first position until you get back uh, to when it repeats you just go back to second position and I make that shift in the very last measure so I use that open E as my moment to shift so that very last note of the last line that F sharp that's when I that's the first note that I'm gonna play back in second position Right, nothing too fancy. So here is part two at 100 on the metro. So here we go. One, two, ready, play. Really, there's not a lot to be said about that. There is one little mark on the second line, first measure. It just reminds you to use your second finger, but you're gonna do that anyway because on that F sharp, I think it's the first time in the book that we've played that low F sharp. So it's just reminding you that too, is just saying, hey, just, by, just a reminder, that's your second finger, it's an F sharp, it's not an F natural, right? Um, 
pretty straightforward on that. Let's go ahead and jump this up a little bit. We're still going to keep it in the moderato realm. We'll try 126. Here's 126 on the metronome. And yeah, so here is part one at 126. One and two and ready and. That's a good exercise. It's fun. It's a fun little song to play. All right, let's try this uh, part two at 126. One, two, ready, and. There we go. I, I kind of flubbed that one note no, right there right before the very end. But there we go. That one, that's the part two at 126. Here's what they sound like together. One and two and ready and... take a look at the next exercise here we've got a scale study and we're going to start off at 72 and we're just going to play this is just a G major scale study as normal on these scale studies at 72 I'm going to play all down strokes and then when I jump it up to 120 I'll play down up down up but here we go here is a scale study at 72 on the metro one two and ready and play And obviously there is a repeat there. Feel free to repeat that as many times as you need to, but that's the exercise at 72. The only thing to watch out for on this is in the last measure of the first line, we have marked there to play that B, the very first note of that last measure of the first line. That B, it says mark to play with your fourth finger, right? And then the three that's circled down below is indicating on the third string. So the four above is saying that's the finger to use, fourth finger on the third string, right? This is good. I like that it, it incorporates this into this exercise, just getting used to the fact that, hey, you know what? Sometimes you can play notes with other fingerings and it's okay and it might be helpful actually. So instead of playing that B open, go ahead and play it with your fourth finger on the G string. Yeah, just fine.
All right, let's go ahead and try this scale study at 120 on the metronome. I'm going to play down up picking for this. And here we go. One, two, one and two and ready and... for scale studies, take it as quickly as you can. You know, just build it to go faster and faster, get your fingers being able to move up and down those notes smoothly and cleanly at a variety of tempos. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at a serenade. It's the last exercise on the page here. We're going to, go ahead and start with the metronome at 72, which is a little under tempo slightly. But that's okay, we'll, we'll start there and we'll kind of talk about the exercise from there. So here we go, 72. One, two, three, one, ready, and... Let's talk about serenade really quick. First off, I have to say with this exercise that I really love this exercise and it just is one that really just kind of flows on the fingers, especially once you learn it. But there are some things to watch out for and things that you will need to kind of work on to make that happen and have it feel that way for you. All right, so let's walk through it a little bit. Starting at the very beginning, our very first note is a chord stack and we have a B and a D, right? And we've seen this combination before and whenever you see that, you know you can't do it with an open B because you need to play the D on the B string. So you're going to go ahead and play the B with your second finger on the third string, okay? Uh, second finger, fourth fret, third string. And then D is going to be with your first finger right there on the second string on the third fret. Okay, so we're starting out. And that shape, so with your first and second finger, that shape is going to move, okay? So we play the first measure, we move into the second measure, and we have a G and a B open, and then we're back to the B and D, and that shape is just going to move down to B flat, D flat, right? So both fingers are just going to move down one fret. And then moving into the third measure, it's just another shift, okay? So we're, um, if we start on that second measure, all it is is we're just keeping that same finger shape with the first and second finger and just shifting down. Nothing to it, right? And then we move into the fourth measure, we've got this F sharp, A, C, nothing fancy. And then a chord stack where we've got A, with our second finger, like normal, 
C with our first finger like normal and open E. And then moving into the fifth measure, we have, it's just a D7 chord, okay? But we're just strumming the top three notes. We've got A with our second finger like it normally would be, C with our first finger like normal, and then at F sharp, we're gonna go ahead and play with our third finger, just normal D7 chord fingering, okay? If you need to reference that chord, uh, you can find it on the previous lesson, previous page, page 37. Okay, now that F sharp's gonna come off, so third finger off, so we can get that open E, and then it's back on. Okay, so that fifth measure is just. And between those three chords, the only thing that's changing is our third finger. It's starting on, coming off, and then going back on. All right, and then we move into the sixth measure where we've got this A sharp, C sharp, and an E. It's that same chord shape that we used in the second measure, right? When we did the... Okay. Now, this is, this is funny because this is... Uh, we talked about this early on when we first talked about sharps and flats. I tossed out a word and it's called enharmonics. And what that means is that sometimes notes can be called two different things depending on what's happening in the music. Okay, so in the second measure, we have that B flat, D flat, right? So B flat with your second finger on the third fret of the third string, and then D flat with your first finger on the second fret of the second string, B flat, D flat. Now we're in the seventh measure, and we're doing the exact same thing, but the notes look different, right? A sharp, C sharp. Now, it's, it's an enharmonic thing. So an A sharp is the same note as a B flat. It's exactly the same thing, okay? Um, it's just, depending on the music and what's happening, it might be called something different. And then same with C sharp and D flat. So it's the same thing, all right? So it's our seventh measure here. We've got that A sharp, which will be our second finger on the third fret of the third string. We've got a C sharp, which will be first finger, second fret of the second string, and then an open E. And then that chord shape is gonna move back up to the B and D like we started at the beginning. It's gonna stay there. Now what's gonna happen is that we, we're gonna add that G on top. So the last measure of the first line, we're gonna add that G and all we're gonna do is just kinda lay our first finger down so we can get that G in there. Right, nothing to it. Nice, and then we go into the first measure of the second line. We've got that G7 situation. Now that first chord stack, all it is, is your third finger is going to be on that F natural. So third finger, third fret on the fourth string, F natural. And then the next note, we're going to have that D, which we're going to play with our fourth finger. Open G. Then your fourth finger is going to jump up to that G. And the second measure of the second line. Right, good, so we've got that G, and then those four eighth notes are just outlining a C chord. In fact, you can just play your standard C chord fingering, and it'll be just fine. Now, let's talk about this next little section. To me, this is the trickiest section in the whole song, in these two measures, so the third and fourth measure uh, maybe including the second measure too. So second, third, fourth measure of the second line. Okay, we've got this big eighth note line. Well, let's break it down, because really it's not too bad. It's just a matter of getting your fingers to do the right things here. So starting again on that second measure, Got that high G, and then it's just a C chord. That's all it is. 
And then the next measure, the first half of it, really is just that chord shape that we talked about before. It's exactly the same chord shape that we used in the seventh measure, one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh measure of the first line, right? So second finger on the third fret of the third string, and first finger on the second fret of the second string. And here in this third measure of the second line, all that is is those first three notes, that's all it is. Then it's going to change a little bit because we've got an open G. And for me, I like to just stay in second position. So, open G and then I play the E with my first finger, C sharp with my third finger. Because I'm already in second position, so I'll just stay. And I will shift right here. So when I get to the fourth measure, I've got that open D. That's where I'm going to shift back to first position. Play the F sharp with my fourth finger. A with my second finger. C with my first finger. E. Now, this high G, I don't know. Like, you can play it with your fourth finger. I see what they're trying to do there. Because you gotta, you got to use your third finger for that F sharp on the D7 chord coming up. So it's saying, use your fourth finger on the G. And that does eliminate having to do a quick shift. Um, for me, I tend to just play that G with my third finger anyway, and then just shift down. It's not that big a deal. So that, that fourth measure, D, F sharp with your fourth finger, A, second finger, C first finger, E open. For me, I played the G with my third finger and then just slide it right into that D7 chord. Now this measure, the fifth measure, is exactly the same as the sixth measure on the first line. We're just adding that low D in the mix. So the only thing that's changing between those three notes is your third finger which starts on, comes off, and goes back on. And then G. Right, and then we just got that big G chord. Nice. So, uh, I mean, really, that's, that's what it is. And for me, this one is all about just like practicing slow and letting your fingers just move smoothly. If you're feeling like choppy or uh, like you got a lot of gaps and stuff, just take it a little slower and really just do your best to try to smooth things out on this one, okay? So, <laughs> let's go ahead and try to jump this metronome up. Now, it says moderato, uh, I don't know. I really actually like the tune right around 100, um, which yeah, that's, that's close to moderato. So let's give it a try. We're going to try it at 100 so you can hear it at a little bit faster tempo. This is really, I think, the sweet spot for this song anyway. So here we go. One, two, three, one, ready, and... Yeah, that was great. Like, again, this is a really a fun exercise to play and one that I think you'll enjoy, especially when you put the time in and, and, uh, and really get your fingers moving smoothly on this. So as we move forward in the next several lessons, you'll notice that, especially now that we've learned the key of G, 
we're going to be learning uh, several songs in this key and we're kind of at the point that these exercises are going to take more time, right? They're not exercises that we might just like blow really quickly through where we might have gone through a whole page or a whole one of these lessons in, you know, a few days or in a week before, you know, you might be spending a whole week just practicing this song to get it down and that's totally okay. Just take your time and get yourself really mastering it and, and it'll be all the better. So you're doing a great job. Kudos on you for sticking in with it this far. And uh, that's our lesson for today. So thank you for tuning in. As always, please subscribe. If you haven't already checked out my website at www.nicktolmanmusic.com, please check it out. As well as if you're enjoying today's content and would like to support Nick Tolman Music in helping to keep this content going, uh, please check out my Patreon page. And we'll see you next time. Thanks. Mm -hmm.